Hello, sunshines. Welcome to my channel where I share my experiences of my transformation journey into becoming the best and highest version of myself. I want to take time to thank everyone that has supported the channel by hitting the subscription button and becoming a subscriber. Thank you so much. I appreciate every single one of you as well as everyone who has left a comment on the page, a beautiful, loving comment. Thank you so much. I am so grateful to you guys. So today's message was actually something that came through while I was reading. <laughs> I stumbled upon a quote from Sigmund Freud, and it really resonated with me. And it was talking about the more perfect a person is on the outside, the more demons they have on the inside. And it really struck me and it hit me because it's true. It's true for me anyways. I really resonated with it because the more perfect I tried to be on the outside, the more I tried to show, show the world or try to show social media, everything is so great in this house. You know, it's not always true or always, you know, everything's so great in this person, but on the inside you're hurting or in the inside you're tired or in the inside you just can't keep doing it and you're depressed and you're sad, but to the world you're happy, right? Happy. <laughs> I did not mean to wear this shirt for this video because of all of that. It just, that's how it works out. But anyway, I reflected upon what made me feel as though I had to attain this perfection status before I could do anything. What, um, where did it come from? Where did it start? So I reflected and I realized that my parents are perfectionist. My dad had OCD. Everything had a place. Everything was always in proper order. Rooms were always clean. Socks had a place. Towels had a place. Tools had a place. Everything had a place. <laughs> everything was in order. And while it was nice growing up with all of that structure and order, I grew a sense of this perfectionist. Everything had to be perfect. And my mom also had perfectionism, but it was in a different way. It wasn't, it, and it's not to say that she wasn't like that, but she had it, she did a lot of art. She painted in a lot of ways, in a lot of ways she painted. And so when she painted, it was perfect. Every little thing was perfect. There were no mistakes, or if it was, they were covered. And so, and, and a lot of her crafts, everything was perfect. And, and she does art stuff now and everything has to be perfect. And so I achieved or I received and achieved and really perfected that goal of being a perfectionist. <laughs> But, um, and, and as I grew older, so I did that as a child with my schoolwork and things. I like things to be in order. My projects always had to be perfect. My posters were perfect. All of it. I really struggled. Well, I didn't, I didn't think it was a struggle back then. Right. Like I, I thought that I was doing, that's how I like things to be. And, and there, and it's not a totally bad thing. It's not like, ah, perfectionism's the worst. It's when you're spending so much energy, ha, you know, have you ever tried to draw like a straight line and you just keep, you know, over and over and over and over and over. And you're like, I just, I can't, you know, take a break, come back to it or quit wasting all of that energy trying to be perfect. But the, I, I did that in my 20s. Behind this message, let me get back to the point, get back on to the, what the message is about. When my children were smaller, I wanted them to have these most perfect birthday parties. They had themes and the cake would have a theme. The food would match the theme. There would be party favors, games, activities. Uh, you know, I would dress them up as their theme. Like, you know, it was a whole shebang. And I did this with holidays. We would have uh, parties or get togethers and I would have games and decorations and outfits and everything was just a culminating event. And I did it even with holiday pictures. Everything had to be matching and perfect. And I really had this sense of perfectionism <laughs> and everything just had to have this space. But what I realized when I was trying to bring forth things in the world and create things in the world, I had a fear of coming out it, to the world with my creation because I felt as though it wasn't perfect. It wasn't ready yet. I had to wait. I had to, you know, wait to, for the right time or I had to wait until I edited everything or I had to wait until I got them, you know, could make a script and then get the 
when I used to not just do the talking videos and, and I did the scripts and, and then did the movies behind it, you know, and that was a lot of work. And so it was all of this perfectionism that I had to have because I couldn't, I didn't want to just speak the message because there was filler words. I might make a mistake. I might mess up. I may not say what I mean. I, you know, all of these things could go wrong. I just need it scripted. So it's perfect. And I need all of the video to match. So it's perfect. And it's perfect. And we just live in this perfect little Barbie world. Perfect. So anyways, perfection is an impossible destination in a lot of ways. And anytime that you achieve it, you just want more, you, you know, you want to perfect it even more and more and more and more and more. And so it truly is an impossible destination. You just never get there. And so you start to realize that progress towards your goals is more than perfecting your goals, <laughs> the progress you're making towards the goal. And then you can push the goal further and do more and do more. But the progress is what you need to focus on, not the perfection, not, you know, quit beating yourself up that what you're doing is not perfect you can't hold that fear in you that what you are creating for this world what's your purpose what you're here to serve others what your talent is you can't share with the world because <clears throat> it's not perfect yet you have to keep working you have to keep practicing you got to keep making these practice videos if, if your dream is to get on youtube and share your message you're a communicator you're a great motivator and, and you can do that and your goal is to get on youtube and to make these messages for people and to inspire people uh, get on there and keep making the videos <laughs> they don't have to be perfect i i have made videos with a hole in my shirt i have made videos where i stuttered i've made videos where I used an example that really wasn't a very good example and I had to backtrack and be like, well, no, just forget that example because it's live. It's authentically who I am. This is not scripted. This, there may be imperfections that pop up. I may say things that I have to take back because this is authentic. This is not scripted. <laughs> so mistakes may happen, but mistakes are beautiful. Mistakes are what allow you to realize you didn't want to go in that direction. You didn't want to go on that topic. You didn't want, you, you didn't need to go that way. You need to go this way. That was a mistake. You learned from it. Mistakes are beautiful as long as you learn something from them and you can grow and move on from it. Don't, it de mistakes do not define you. No matter how major of a mistake it is in life, they do not define you. That's a person of the past. That is something that happened in the past and we are in the present moment now. So, I felt like I was this waiter, you know, I had all of these plates on my serving tray. I had perfect family pictures, perfect family, perfect Christmases, perfect birthdays, perfect dinners, perfect vacations, perfect, perfect hair, perfect this, perfect that, perfect, 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 Stafford wives, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt like this little waiter with all of these plates and I was like, I'm going to topple over because it's like I, every time I tried to make sure everything was perfect and like in balance and like, oh, we're so good. It's like something else would topple. And I was like, no, 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 no. Got to fix that. We got to stay balanced. Like, you know, and then like a kid would cry during our Christmas picture and I couldn't get that perfect little smile. And it's like, it's toppling. And it's like, no, 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 no. Make him happy. Get that. You know, and then you're just like, we will wobble. We will wobble. But at the end, it all falls down you cannot maintain that perfection why because we are in perfect individuals we all have made mistakes we all have fallen short of the glory of god we all have sinned we have we are imperfect it is a fact of life we are all the, in the same boat where we have all made mistakes my mistake may be different than your mistake. People may judge your mistake to be more severe than my mistake. Does it mean that it's more severe? Some people may think that my mistake is more severe than your mistake. And we have this shame, we have this guilt because of these mistakes that we have created. But I want you to forget all of that because mistakes are beautiful. They teach you things. If you learn from them, I'm telling you, <laughs> so much beauty can be birthed from mistakes. So much beauty is in imperfection. So don't let that fear that your creation is not ready to release to the world. You are here to serve others with a talent, with a purpose, with 
something. <laughs> you have some type of gift in you to share with this world. And my job is to help you find it, to help you embrace it, to help you let that seed grow, to allow you to bloom into your highest potential, to your highest and best good. I want to see you do well. I want to see you thrive. And if you hold this bar of perfection and you're not releasing, releasing your creation to the world, whether it's a beautiful song that you wrote, whether it's a beautiful piece of art that you have painted, whether it's a book that you've written, but you're too scared to share it because it may be imperfect and there may be mistakes in it, you know, but that's what makes things beautiful. That's what makes things unique. Your imperfections is what sets you out apart from the crowd. Yes, it is scary at times to be a part of the crowd, but that is your unique mark on humanity. That is what you can use to show other people, to make you stand out so people remember your message and your gift to humanity. It's your uniqueness. It is why you are here. Only you can provide this unique gift to humanity. You are here to share it. Don't let it go to the cemetery to die. <laughs> you want to find what gift is inside of you and share it with the world. But don't let this standard that it has to be perfect keep you from doing it. Don't allow that. I think in a lot of religions, that really keeps people from converting because you feel like you already have to be perfect to be a part of the group. And you don't. It's okay. God recognizes that you're imperfect. Jesus recognizes that you're imperfect. I recognize you're imperfect. I recognize I'm imperfect. I am not a perfect human. I have fallen short many, many, many times in many, many, many different ways. And it's okay because you know what? Those mistakes are who made me who I am now, who I am today. And those mistakes have made you who you are today. Those imperfections that you have have made you beautiful today. They are what makes you set apart to do what you were designed to do in this world. <laughs> Don't get me fired up, y'all. But honestly, stop letting that I have to be perfect crap keep you from achieving your highest dreams. You, the, the idea is to create whatever you were born to create in this world and share it with people and attract the right people in that resonate with your gift. Your gift is not going to resonate with everyone. Everyone that listens to my messages do not resonate with them. Some people are empowered and motivated and are ready to change the world. And some people are triggered. Some people, they don't feel anything. And that's okay. That's okay because the people that do need to hear this message, the people that it does resonate with will find me. They will hear this message. It may be you, you, the one listening right now. You may be the one that I'm meaning this message for. That you don't need to hold this standard of perfection to go and do what you love to do, to do your passion. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to fail. fail failure is so negative negatively uh, connotated in the English language. It's like, oh, you failed. It's the end. Like, what are you going to do now? Failure is not the end. It is lessons learned. It is nothing more than lessons learned in this life. It has just taught you something. It has taught you to become stronger. It has taught you to be, you know, um, resilient. It has taught you strength. It has taught you which way you don't want to go. It ha There's a lot that you can learn in failure. It can teach you how to do things a different way that are that's more efficient, that is more motivating. They can, you know, um, failure has changed a lot of things in the world. It has what didn't work. New solutions were created to find things that do work. And that's what failure does. So yeah, this didn't work. This career didn't work. This relationship didn't work. This whatever, this business didn't work. Whatever it may be, this hobby didn't work. This, when you, you wrote a book and you went to that publisher, that publisher didn't work. But did that mean that it's the end all be all? That now they're, they're, that's, that's the end? You failed. Game over. No, no, not at all. 
you just go in a different direction and try something new. Try, try a different way. Try a new solution. It doesn't mean you failed. So do not keep, uh, let that fear of failure, that fear of perfection, keep you from achieving your dreams, from achieving what you are meant to do in this world. <laughs> so if you resonated with this video, just go ahead and give me a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next video. Mwah.